Um, is there a simple way to explain the Trinity to non-believers? Yeah, okay. I think it's uh, Renee's turn to go first, isn't it? Renee? Yeah, well, you can explain spiritual things, but it doesn't mean they're going to get it. Uh, the natural man receiveth not the things of God. Uh, he's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So uh, it's going to make no sense to their natural mind. Uh, we can say what scripture says. The Bible uses the term Godhead and God speaks of himself in plural. We, us, our, right? Jesus says himself that he came down from heaven but he prayed to the father in heaven. And there's several places in scripture where we have the presence of all three of the Godhead in one place. Um, so you'll see it, for instance, at Jesus's baptism, the, if the father speaks from heaven while Jesus is being baptized and the Holy spirit descends on him in the form of a dove. So uh, that's where all three of the Godhead were present. Uh, so you can find places like that. Uh, there's also a verse. Many try to take it out and say some of the manuscripts don't have it. But it says these three bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Um, and that's really clear. All A lot of the new Bibles take out the word Godhead. The Godhead implies more than one. But I believe that the Godhead is also one. A hero is Israel, your God is one. Your God is united. Uh, and it shows the Trinity makes it possible for love to be given and received within God himself. So God himself can give and receive love without creation. And therefore, that's how God is love. An eternal Godhead, same attributes, different people. Like he is one God manifest in three distinct persons. And this uh, Jesus is the father doesn't work because even though he is one with the father, uh, the father was in heaven and Jesus was here. Uh, and the father gave Jesus a kingdom and Jesus sat down at the right hand of the father. And I believe that's literally sat down on a throne in heaven next to the father. I believe that. So, um, they are distinct three persons, one God, one Godhead. And, uh, some people get tripped up on that, but it doesn't, it's not three gods. Like the Muslims say it's one God united in purpose in eternality, etc. But, uh, three distinct persons. Okay, thanks. All right, Brother Ben. Well, I, I can't really improve on everybody's answer, but there's plenty of verses that teach that, uh, you know, Hero Israel, your God is one. I think that's in Exodus. Uh, so God is one, yet, like she said, there's three distinct persons as seen, for example, at Jesus' baptism, where Jesus was present, the Holy Spirit descended on him, and then um, the, the Father uh, was heard from heaven. Um, there, there's plenty of verses uh that you, you could see where the, uh, God is three distinct persons, but one. They're all the same essence, um, but still just three distinct people. Um, and I even tried to kind of look at, you know, I, I, I spent time like, okay, well, let's see if I can find some like um, commonality. Like, okay, like maybe the whole, does each person have a different agency or purpose? And there's a lot of overlap. Um, so even that uh, is is not sometimes all that helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, scripture is very clear. God is, is one, but three distinct persons. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the, the question says, uh, can you give us a simple way of explaining the, the Trinity to non-believers? Uh, and there's a difference between explaining in a simple way and proving. Uh, so I think what you've done so far is proven it. And, and certainly that's important. We, there, the Bible, uh, you cannot come to any other conclusion if you look at the Bible as a whole. 
so it can be easily proven that there is one God, but we have the Father's God, the Son's God, the Holy Spirit's God, and yet there's only one God. Uh, the, um, the in early church history, I did a series titled "Early Church History." Uh, it went to the through the fourth uh, century, uh, the, the first, second, third centuries. I uh, taught on that, and, and uh, much of of what was uh, trying to be resolved was this question: uh, How do we explain this Godhead? And uh, they, they, they made the Nicene Creed in 325 AD, uh, the first council of Nicaea. And they wrote a creed, the Nicene Creed. You should all read it. I, 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 as I said, go to my playlist early, or I have another, another playlist called Early Church Creeds or Church Creeds. And the Nicene Creed uh, uh, clearly teaches uh, and the, the uh, Trinity, but uh, they built upon it with the the in seventy years later, I think they uh, they did their um, uh, second uh, Council of Nicaea, and, and uh, it was um, th they added to it and expanded it further, uh, and then they had several other councils and and creeds, but finally when the um, Athanasian Creed was I think the grand finale, they they first wanted to explain. Um, that Jesus is God. He's not merely a prophet. And, and then, so you have the Father and the Son that are God. And then by the time they get to the last creeds, they're saying we need to also make sure everybody understands that there's three, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. And so that's what you'll find in the Athanasian Creed. Uh, these were, uh, in many ways, uh, great minds, great theologians, and, and they uh, debated and struggled to, to, to find a way to put it into words. So I suggest you read the Athanasian Creed more than more so than any of the others, um, because that's the best I've ever seen in terms of trying to put it into words. And 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 in the Creed, they're not only explaining what it is, but they're refuting Arianism and other other heresies that were being taught at the time. That was one of the reasons this was necessary. So uh, it is easy to prove uh, that uh, there's a triune Godhead and the word Trinity. Uh, is what's used to express it. Uh, from the very first, the fourth word of the whole Bible, it says, in the beginning, God, and that word God is Elohim, and that's plural. So if a person um, starts studying the Bible and they see this as God, but it's plural, that should automatically start make a person think, what? why does it say God? Is this a polytheism in the Bible? Uh, uh, and, and then, of course, uh, it goes on to say that let us make man in our image. So here you also have a, a plural. It's stated in the plural. It doesn't say, I will make God in my image. So these things should make us wonder, whoa, why is it plural instead of singular if, if this is monotheism? Uh, but... Uh, it, it, you, can't, you can't come to any other conclusion uh, if you study the Bible as a whole and, and read these creeds and it'll help make sense. But I want to answer the question uh, not on not about uh, how do we prove that this that God is triune, but I, I want to answer the question the way it's written. Can you explain a simple way to show, show someone the Trinity, a, a non-believer? And there's, there's been a lot of different ways that people have attempted to do it. I'll give you two examples. But there's a problem with this first one. And, and uh, I ask you to think before I give the answer. But that is um, uh, ice, uh, water, and vapor. If you have an ice cube, uh, it's H2O. And if you let it melt, it's water, and it's H2O. And then if you let it evaporate, it turns into vapor, and that's H2O. It still remains H2O, but it's three. I've heard a lot of people use that as a, a way of trying to make a, a picture of the Trinity. But I object to that. That's not a good way of expressing the Trinity. That would really be a good way of expressing modalism, Sabellianism, the belief that um, there's one God, and he just changes forms. He'll change from the Father to the Son to the Holy Spirit and back and forth. It's modes of 
functioning. He, he'll function in the mode and then change to another mode to function. So um, you have the three, the three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but it's really Jesus is still, they also call it uh, Jesus only. In other words, Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. There's problems with that. The, 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 the thing that I, can, uh, I like about it is they're acknowledging Jesus is eternal God Almighty, but they're not recognizing, as Renee pointed out, uh, we have the, uh, the appearance of all three at the same time at the baptism. You have Jesus, God in the flesh. You have the Father speaking uh, here you hear his voice he's not it's not jesus speaking and then you have the holy spirit descending in the manner of a dove so you have all three of them at the same place at the same time whereas in modalism that's not possible he's he's one at a time it just changes fun, modes of function uh so I, I don't like the example of water to be uh used for because that would support modalism rather than the triune godhead uh, I think the best way I've heard uh, to uh, give us a picture of what the Trinity is, is when we look at, when it says, let us make man in our image, God is saying that he would make man in the image of God. So we're going to be like God in certain respects. And if God is one, but three, we're made in the same way. Here you see me, I'm Luke, but I'm three and I'm one. I'm Luke, the physical. I'm Luke, the soul or the mind. I'm Luke, the spirit. And yet one, Luke. So to me, that's the best uh, way to uh, illustrate uh, the, the, the Trinity or the Godhead. All right, any more, Renee or Ben? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little upset at uh, modalism becoming so popular because they really take verses and twist them up uh, and don't take, like you said, Luke, the Bible as a whole. Don't study it as a whole. Uh, there's a reason, you know, I was saying the other night, I'm very slow to move away from an orthodox position. I believe all of us on this panel are. Uh, it takes a lot of study, prayer, thinking, you know, contemplation for me to leave an orthodox position because there's been many great Holy Spirit people of God studying these things and working them out. And uh, I believe uh, they got most of it right. I really do. Uh, and I think people's zeal against what they see as corruption in, in the church or their, their dislike of the Roman Catholic Church go too far because they throw out everything the Roman Catholic Church says. Some things they got right, and the Trinity is one of them. So... Um, I, I think modalism is actually based on ignorance of scriptures and someone cleverly took verses that would support it without showing the evidence of the other. You know, it's real easy to prove a position if you only show them things that support it. So um, take this to God and read the entire Bible as a whole on this. But uh, uh, absolutely. I agree. Um, that the Trinity is true. It is scriptural. Uh, I did want to.